53. Welcome back. Today we're just going to play with Tai Chi. I was trying to think about what are the topics and I thought I have done 52 topics. I've done a whole year's worth of topics, which normally, you know, I would spread out. And so uh, the condensed version means we've done so many different topics. And so today I thought, let's play with Tai Chi. What do we learn when we start our Tai Chi practice? And we're listening to the body and we're listening to what it's trying to tell us on that day. Because every day is different. And the emotional um, position that you'll be in is always different, which means there's tightness in the body in different places. And also you have structural things. What did you do the day before? Did you overwork in the garden? Or did you um, spend time on a concentrated effort? What does your body need today? So, hi Charlotte. So what uh, we're going to talk about today then is how you play with Tai Chi and how you listen for the, the cues that the body's trying to give you to know where to go today. So one is you can just do the set and that's great. But the second part is to just allow yourself to be able to listen and then respond to what the body's looking for. So I thought what I would do is start with um, Sabre. And I thought I would start with the seated version only because what I'm looking for is where in my body am I going to notice things are tight or not moving quite the way I want. That's what I just want to pay attention to. I can do that a little bit easier when I'm seated than when I'm standing. So that's why I'm going to choose that. And then we'll dive in from there. Okay, so you want to grab your spoon, your, um, I just realized this needs to go down a bit. The spoon, the, the wrapping paper roll, the whatever it is, the spike from the garden, whatever you're going to use for your stick, that's great. And uh, and then let's let's just play a little bit. Okay, so just bringing some awareness into the body. Take a couple deep breaths. Usually I dive right into the set. But let's just have some breaths and just bring our focus into our center and just be present. Fabulous. <laughs> Here comes Hunter. Here, Hunter. Okay. I'll, I'll move over and you can have that. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Hello. See? We were waiting for everybody to get here, weren't you? Yeah. Okay, we'll see how long you last with the saber. All right. Hope you've had a couple good deep breaths. So let's start the set now that we're calm and focused, and then just bring that value. And let that go. And then rising up, out through the spine at the top of the head, and the hand is going to come through, expand. And then Pushing into that right foot, just a little bit of awareness. Into the left foot, a little bit of awareness back. And then push that out. This is going to rise up. It's going to go down the leg. It would roll up to your right. Awareness in your right leg. Comes around to the left. Awareness in your left foot. And around. And here's our sweep. And again, I like to fall forward into the first part, push into the left foot to spiral back. Just pushing three forward and spiral back. Come forward, spiral back. You can go out. So this comes around. One more, and then push that forward. Okay, so now this is going to go a little bit of pressure into the right foot, a little into the left, a little into the right, straight forward, a little into the left, a little into the right, a little in the left, a little in the right. Straight forward. Little in the left. 
Then loom the right, down to the hip, little into the right, have back go, and up. Little in the left, little in the right, down to the hip, changing hands. In that left just a little bit, little in the right, little bit into the right, little in the left, little bit in the right, down the middle, and up, little in the left. Little in the left, little in the right, little in the left, in the right, in the left, in the right, in the left. Spiraling on the feet. This is going to go over, straight, right, straight. That's coming up nice and tall, down. Changing hands, pushing into both feet to come back. Like that, come in. Open, so let that lift up nice and tall, and then let that go. Okay, and just adding the bow in. Okay, so if you were to draw awareness into what you just experienced, what are you noticing? Are you noticing a particular shoulder, arm, hip? joints, anything that are calling out to you. Uh, for me, mine is I didn't drink enough water, so my body is definitely telling me that, so I know I'm going to grab that. Um, but let's experience now from there, let's go to the 17 moves for Tai Chi, standing, you can stay seated if you wish, and let's see if you're feeling the same thing as you run through that part of the set, see what shows up. Okay. So if you just prepare that, and I'm just going to grab some water. So and I thought I had been drinking enough water all day, but obviously not. And I know because I just can feel in my back, and it's usually like a backache, um, and there's no reason for the backache. So that's when I know, oh, I just don't have enough water in there. So hi, Jeanette. Now. This would be a good lesson. The water, you don't want to guzzle it straight back. You want to make sure it goes up into the top palate. Because that's where the sensors will be able to tell the body water's coming. And if you are a little bit dehydrated, you can go between the xiphoid process and the belly button. And you can go midway between. There's a little point right there. You just rub that point. That'll actually distribute the water into the organ systems and into the Otherwise, it would go to muscles first. And so this gives it a chance to get right into the system. So you just rub that little point. Okay, that's your, that's your lesson or tip for today. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to finish this. And let's do the first 17. And Hunter will keep protesting. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put the bow in. So I wanted to add that gratitude in, but also standing, so I've got that option. Okay, so bring that forward, feeling right into the feet. Notice if you can feel all those nine points. And then let that just settle straight down, let the back open, expand. Beautiful. Okay, pushing into the feet. It's going to give you that rise and the safety. 
commencement. Okay, so sorry, I'm like, which set am I doing? Okay, so we're going to turn to the right and reach out, hold the ball, left grasp its tail, hold the ball, so you go straight forward, grasp its tail, and you've got a hand that can be in the finger, fingertips can be in the wrist or in the palm. We've talked about that a lot, so I'll leave that for you. Facing back, it's going to turn around, spiral out of that, up and out, sink, place the foot, and reach. Sink back into the right, heel goes out, sink, foot, hand, and glide across, and then pushing through that, then separate, sink. Step through, brush knee. Half a step, heel goes out, sink. Brush knee. So step, brush knee. I'm just going to go around the dining room table. <laughs> Twist step, brush knee. Half a step, I'm just going to bring myself back, open, brush knee, twist step, hold the flowers, it's going to take you up, step patois, in, out, sink, comes through, point the swing, two hands, Turning the left, spiraling the right, sink. Crossing over, and then let that go. So our job is just to do the 17, and just to notice what we were feeling. Okay, so as I don't have a class in front of me to be able to respond, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to anticipate what you might be saying, okay? So maybe I'll be intuitive. All right, I see the Gillises have signed on, so welcome, glad to see you. Okay, so I'm going to just lock into my feet and let them tell me what they need to tell me. So I'm noticing that the big ball of my right foot is pushing a little bit more into the floor than anywhere else. And that's common. That's most days when I get started, that's where I tend to have more of that push in there. I don't know what that means exactly, except to be aware that it's not balanced. That's all I need to know. I also noticed that the toes are not really connected to the floor. So I need to have a little bit more of that. So if I was to respond to what does my body need, I could run another set, but I could also play and I could I could focus in on what I want to notice. So let's let's say you have something in the feet, yours aren't balanced. Maybe the weight isn't equal on both feet. Maybe you lean over to one side a little bit more heavy. Or maybe you notice uh, someone last night was commenting um, on a course we were doing uh, that their heel wasn't even connected to the floor at all. Everything was up into the ball of the foot and the toes were disconnected from the floor. So let's play with that. What do we know from Tai Chi? So we do know that brush knees with that spiral action can engage things. So let's try that. So if you start with your feet together, turn your right 45 and then sink down into the right foot step with the left and this is going to come through twist step step with the right brush through and my focus I mean I'll be feeling things differently in my body but my focus at the moment my intention is into those feet and how can I sense things while I'm I'm stepping on them and when do I notice the awareness? Okay, and I'm just going to do one more. Not sure how big your space is. Okay, so my right foot is in front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my left foot, step patois with my right, and sink. Now I'm going to have a push off with the front toe. 
be able to see it on this one here. So as I come back and I'm opening the tailbone at the back, I've got that ball of the foot on the right. Now it'll be on the left, connected to the floor. So I'm changing the way I'm, I'm actually working with the floor. Open. Push. What are we doing? One more. And push. Then I have the gear spaces. Okay. So that gave me brush knees and word of monkey coming back. So now what happens when I connect into the floor? Okay. So checking with your feet, what do you feel? So my big the ball of that right toe is not pushing so hard, but I can definitely feel the bones across the top of my foot are being pushed up a little bit. So they may have just been flattened a little bit just by whatever it was that I was doing. So I go, okay, so articulation of my feet would be really important to spend some time. So I could do the seated foot exercises, or I could go to Tai Chi walks. I've done a lot of the foot exercises, so I'm maybe going to leave that today uh, just to give you a different experience. So let's go to the one, I'll just go sideways. So where you take the step in the foot, you feel your foot on the floor, but you have the back foot pushing through the ball of each toe and then down into that front foot. Step the foot and then push down into that and then off of the toes. You're down in the left foot. Push off of that. Down into the right, pushing off the toes. Step. Sink. Push off the toes. Sink. Push off the toes. Okay, and one more push. So now what I'm going to do is turn those toes over. So my weight is still on the right foot. I'm just going to turn the toes over. So I'm rolling across the top of the toes, wherever is comfortable for you. And my weight has not changed. So there's no reason to worry about the ankles or anything. It's just place the foot and then roll and come back. Thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> Rolls over. Comes around. Sink. Let the back open. Holding. Roll through. Sink. Roll through. Sink. So I'm, all my weight is on that foot. Complete balance. And then I can just focus on what does my foot feel like. If I'm wobbling around, then I know I don't have everything engaged. Um, but I'm not feeling that. You might be feeling that. There's a little bit more on my right foot than my left. My left is like solid. My right's doing a little bit of quivering. Okay, so that gives me that option. So now if I stand on both feet, now I feel where those bones were like being pushed up in the right foot, that's flattened out. Okay, so what I've done is I've listened to the body. What does it need? What exercise might I have from all the things we've covered, and how can I play with it? Okay, so that gave me a really nice connection. But now what I'd like to do, because my focus was in the feet, is bring the awareness from the feet all the way through the body. So I'm going to do the same exercise, but I'm going to add the commencement arms. I'm going to add that because that creates that wave where the back opens, the spine rises, separation in the joints. That then is going to change also the way the feet look. So if I step forward with my right and I fall down into my right foot and push off my left toes. Step and sink. So I'm down in my left. Push off my foot, off my toes, down in the right. Step, sink, fall down into the neck. Push, sink, push, sink, push, sink, go 
approach C. Okay, so now all my weight is on my left foot. My right toe is going to turn over. And what I'm going to do is commencement only with the hand of the foot that's turned over. The other hand is going to push to the floor. So it's going to go commencement, roll back onto that foot. Commencement, roll back. The hand that is pushing to the floor is grounding that foot that's doing all the balancing for you. So the hand is flat, grounds you. Right there. Beautiful. Connect to the floor. Connect to the floor. Okay, and that allowed me the opportunity to come through. And now if I connect back into my feet, I feel like both feet have equal strength, and I'm like on top of my feet. So I'm not sure if that's what you're feeling, but at least I can give you that example. So now that whole body movement, while I was doing that, it was like, oh, my feet are feeling pretty good. But I was noticing my back isn't quite coordinating. My arm is moving, but through my back is not as fluid as I would like it to be. So if I think about that, and I think, what exercises do I know from the set that would allow me to open that? So if we were to go to part three, and do, uh, at the start of part three, is carry tiger to the mountain, whip out horizontal, and then party horses main. So if we go through that little sequence, I think that might be a good place where I could now take my focus into my back and just feel up and down the spine. Okay, so let's try that. So if I face this direction, we've got, uh, we're gonna open, sink down into the right foot so the left leg can turn. Sink back into the left foot so all your weight is there. Place the right foot into the back corner and you've got Russian. That's gonna expand, sink back into that left foot palm to palm, open the hands, two hands go out, sink back, so the foot's going to come around, spiral on that left, so we're coming up, whip out horizontal, place the foot, hips going to be right to the front, and now we're going to come back into that right leg, turn the left. Here's forming the circle we talked about a couple weeks ago. And now reach out. So we've got this figure eight that is going to allow the tissue to adjust diagonally across. So instead of trying to stretch straight up the spine, I'm letting it try and crisscross. So here's number five, and that goes left grass bird's tail, which now is going to come into the corner, and then grass bird's tail, this time I'll go into the palm, full narrow back, palm to palm, open the hands, two hands go out, sinking back, turning that right leg, Spiral on the left toe. It's going to come all the way through out the arms and turn the reach. Okay, so that one, assuming you had something in the back to pay attention to, what did you notice about the way you were moving and feeling in that space? So when I got here, I could definitely feel tight in the middle of my back, and I wasn't happy when I was doing this movement at all, actually, it was even tighter. So that's a good awareness for me that standing might not be my best choice. Maybe I should be going to seated. So let's move that. So if I go to here and we do the exact same pattern, see if you notice a difference in the way the back functions as a result of having sat down. So we went from carry tiger to the mountain, so we crossed. This is going 
going to roll back from the sit bone towards the tailbone. And that's very tied into the mountain. And then you're going to go forward into the brush knee on the right. Push into the feet, a little bit more into the right. It's going to give you that little bit of movement towards the left. Left foot and forward. Push into both feet. And then two hands are going to go out, falling down into the feet. Hands turn. This would be whip out horizontal. Feet, it doesn't make any difference. It's still whip out. <laughs> Toes out. Okay, push into the feet. And let that roll up. And this is going to allow you to come out. Gather. You may notice the center of your back has some different movement in the way that it can roll. It comes around, reach out. Comes around, and reach out. So we have number four. So let's do, this is number five. Hope I counted right. I was enjoying the movement. Okay, left grasp its tail, so it's gonna go straight forward. Hold the ball. And let's put the fingertip this time into the center of the palm. Push into the feet. Palm to palm. Push into the feet. And then let that come out. Up, okay. Oh, it's going to come around. And reach out. Okay. So, now I can... Pay attention to what did you feel. And I definitely felt like the tension left the middle of my back. And there was more cross movement that I could get that had a little bit more fluidity to it than I had when I was standing. So that gives me a new way to approach Tai Chi today because if I had chosen to just do standing version, I may have gone a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, and not found relaxation. So by listening, I was able to bring myself down to the seated, and then find out what do I feel now that I'm moving there. Okay, let's take a pattern that's from part two, I'm just gonna jump you all over, which is where we go without diagonal. And that's where the hands make the T, the elbows drop, and then there's this spiral that comes here, and then the reach out to the right, and then fist goes underneath the elbow. So let's do that little sequence, because it has the cross pattern movement, but then as you get the fist underneath elbow, you take the cross pattern, you lift it, and you line everything up. So let's see if that changes the way some of the tissue in the back wants to operate. So you start from um, prairie tiger to the mountain again, okay? And so you are rolling from that sit bone back towards the tailbone. Lift up, so you have the separation vertebra, everything's nice and long, and then you have brush knee right. Push into that right foot, a little bit more awareness there, into the left, center. Center down both feet, and center to come out. That's the same as we did before. So hands turn, fingertips face each other. Turns into the T, elbows drop, push into that right foot, awareness goes to the left foot, and that's going to go out. So fist turns, palm is towards you, there's a lift, palm turns away, and then we have an expansion, and then here's ward off monkey. I'm just going to let this one roll through because this is going to be beautiful extension for the back to be able to find balance. Comes through, open, um, and this would be quite a slant. So just into the left, into the right, and reach out. Right. Okay, so that one for me had a big difference in the way the movements came together. And I noticed right away 
after Carrie Tiger to the mountain just before I went to do this and I'm pulling here all of a sudden it was like flow happened and there was this freedom that kind of came with this movement and I was just experiencing it in my fingertips I don't know what you experienced but hopefully there was some awareness that came in that allowed you to notice something a little bit different at that time okay so now if we touch in with the bottom I'm going to just connect with the feet. Actually, let's just take the palms now that everything's activated. Just remember that the palms, the palm chakra has electrical charge coming through, and we've got a lot of flow happening right now. And when you bring awareness over top of those knees, and just think about connecting those palms to the floor and to the feet, notice what that feels like. I actually want to go from, it's almost like I'm sitting too far forward. I want to just come just a little bit back. And then that feels much, much better there. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so hopefully you feel a connection in back with the spot there. And, and just let that go. Okay, so we have that experience and awareness. And then just see, uh, let's come up. Ah. Ryan is beautiful. Hello, hello. Okay, so let's um, let's go from oh, move hands like clouds, which would be let's do the one that does seven times. And again, this is now just connecting in with the back and up and down action. Just noticing what you're feeling like. Notice that connection over the feet, how the feet are feeling. So just keep bringing that awareness back in. We're going to do the seven across. We'll come whip to one side, and that'll take us into the snake, which will take us into right and left. And the reason I'm going to choose that is when you go to stand on the foot to do that, I just want you to be aware. Does it feel the same as when we started back at the beginning? Okay, so let's try. With seven move hands like clouds. I'm going to move over because I'll be into the down into it. Okay, so we have this beautiful circle down into the right foot and then across. Down into the left foot. Push out of the left foot. Across, sink. And again, you're down into that right foot, connecting your toes into the floor, making sure that connection is there. Push out of the left foot. Feel the connection of the toes. Sink. Comes across. Sink. Push in. Left foot. Sink. Into right foot. Across. I believe this is number five. Sink. Comes across. across. Okay, so this goes out, comes back around, whip to one side, sink down on that right foot, place the left foot, and let yourself wind around. Okay, now we have a snake. So this one is open the right toe, open the left heel, do a one-legged dime. So you're sinking down on your right foot, open the left side, and then you're going to stand on the left foot. Step and stand on the right foot. Open the hand. We've got ward off monkey. So we'll just do a couple of these. Open. 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 And this is going to come around into the right over to the left, and let that reach out. Okay, so with that one, we were using that snake to be able to figure out when we came out of it and we stood, did we have that balance where we connected to the feet, did we have the grounding that we were looking for? So for me, having practiced uh, Tai Chi so much, I come up and I can stand on that foot and solid. 
without going anywhere. And my foot wasn't even trying to adjust, it was just solid. And then when I stepped, same. Both feet were equal, which is great because when we started, my right side was not. So I'm hoping you're sensing some of these pieces. Okay, so that's walked us through some of the pieces from Tai Chi and how we could play. So let's go to low cup. And so if this is new to you, just focus on remembering you can sit down in the chair and do it just arms because there's a lot going on in low cup. And uh, it takes a little bit of time to get used to the movements and be patient with it. And if you know the set already, then just, you know, here we go with it. And if you want to practice really about learning the movements, seated is your best way. So have a seat. I'm going to stay, sta I'm going to stay standing because somebody took my chair. <laughs> but also I actually don't want to do the standing version. Okay, so the low cup set, if you remember correctly at the beginning, is about the water wheel and about getting the water to start to flow through the body. And I am still thinking about my awareness of my feet, opening in my back, and where I have that tension kind of in the middle of my back. I'm just going to be really aware of it. So when I move, I'm going to want to move not to the point where that tension is felt, but to back that up a little bit. So it's just really gentle how it's going to massage back and forth. Okay, so the palm is coming up. And then the tailbone is going to sink backwards. So you can open the back. And then this is going to let go. Sink down, let the hips relax. The fingertips come towards each other and the right hand comes out. The weight's on your left. Push into that left foot, spirals you around to the right. And when your hand at the back is with the fingertips to the floor, turn the hand and your tailbone is going to line up with the floor. This is going to come up into you, nice and tall. So now the hands are going to turn to the right. There's a nice lift there, but then you're going to drop, open the hips, let the knees relax. This is going to come up to let you turn. And then bring back that left foot. Right hand is going to come up. Let that go. So the left hand is going to sweep across the right. Step. And this is going to go to the ground. Separate. And go down to the knee. Hold the ball. Step to the right. back, down to the knee, wipe the sleeve, and then we're going to step the feet together to find that connection in the feet, push into the feet, notice how the spine can line up out through the top of the head, opening the hands, sink down into the feet, notice how they work. Just in case the toes decide they want to lift off. You're going to roll. Let that come through. Sink. Palm is going to come up. I'm just going to do a little bit more. Sink. There's just so many beautiful movements here for the feet. You walk through the right foot up into the toe. Up on the toe of the left foot. Sink. Step straight and push out. I'm just going to do the last part turning around. It's going to sink back. The hands rotate around so they've turned, palm up. There's a rise, a sink, and a push out. Okay, so if it's new for you again, you could do everything seated and just copy my hands what they're doing. There's lots of turns. What I did notice is my ankles and knees the joints started moving and the bones were trying to line up. So what I noticed is, even though I focused on all those other pieces across my Tai Chi set, all of a sudden there was this need now to put the bones back into the right place. So let's just try again and see if same experiences. I don't know what you might have felt. Let's see what you are happening. So the palm's going to come up, extend out. 
rock the tailbone. Sink. Fingertips go together. The whole back opens up behind. Expand. Push into that left foot. Brings you around. Sink down into the right foot. Comes up. Pushing into the left foot takes you out. Light saber right here. Sink. Up. The foot turns. Sink. Plant the foot and push. Up to the spiral up. Stepping with the left foot, this is going to go to the brow. Step the leg out. And then brush the knee. Hold the ball. Step and chill. And strap. Step the feet together and comes up to top. Sink. That's going to come out. Roll that around. Sink. Okay, planted in that left foot. Planted down into that left foot again, and then walking through those feet. Step through, push out. Sink back, roll, sink, and let that flow out. Okay. I'm not sure what you felt there. I have uh, still one little part that would really like to just move, um, but the rest where all the bones were actually starting to move around, whereas they were like solid while I was doing the Tai Chi, now they're actually starting to be a little bit more fluid. So I'm not sure what you experienced, but let's try it one more time. And hopefully I can not say as much so you can just relax into the movements, which makes them all that more wonderful. So we're coming up. Right hand, sink, turning, sink, rise, sink, rise, It's nice if you just get lost, which is absolutely delightful. Okay, so that I hope illustrated for you a way um, that you could be really aware of what's going on in the body and then translate that into how you can explore your Tai Chi and give yourself the room and space to play. 
You can definitely run a set, and it's wonderful, but you can dive in deeper. You can become aware. You can know more about yourself. And you also start to notice patterns, like I was talking about with my feet, noticing that pattern of how that weight's always a little bit tighter on one side. Okay, so let's finish off with a couple of the foundation exercises. And let's do this so that you can just do that tendon muscle connection, which is everything is calm now, I think. Push through. This is where you can start to really make change happen. This, I can notice my shoulder on the left there. Um, it has so much more mobility. I know keeping Saber in there has made a big difference. It really enjoys that bit of movement. There's always one spot that just, and maybe that's where the tear is, it just isn't going to work. But I have the ability to move through the range of motion. And this exercise, which has been a challenge, is actually quite good. So again, bringing my awareness in, I'm noticing how I was able to kind of balance things out today, so they were not balanced when I started. It's a great spot, especially if it's arms and shoulders, because you'll find it in here. Beautiful. Okay, and then let's just do a spine rotation. Your hips always stay to the front. There are some activities where you spiral bigger, but I prefer to keep it straight because that means then the spine is going to turn properly. Don't do that. Don't do that, you. Okay, taking all the cushioning off. Hunter. Okay, he's going to come across. See his little paws just trying to get into that cloth. Coming across. So it has awareness in the right foot and then awareness in the left foot. That's what allows the waist to turn. So the belly's going to go. It's connected to the foot. Belly's going to go connected to the foot. Just awareness, so you don't want to draw so much attention to it that you have tension. It's just awareness that that foot is creating that whole body opportunity of movement. And you know, with the work we did with the spine and the motions, being able to turn all the way through the spine now, there's no hindrances happening. We opened everything up able to balance that and let anything go. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. Send the love back. Okay. That one feels so good. Okay. And we'll finish here. Just let this one come through. So relax into the feet. Notice what they're feeling like now, which is hopefully very grounded. But the hips just completely let go. And coming through the middle gate, which is between the shoulder blades, is really connecting this action. So I'm not pushing forward. It looks like that because everything, <laughs> my sweater is moving. My shoulders stay in the same place. And it's just the circulation of the hands. I can feel in my hips kind of a zigzagging little tiny bit of movement that's there. And that just tells me I have the flow coming all the way through the body. I didn't lock it up. I have actually achieved letting go. All right. So hopefully.
hopefully you're feeling that as well. Okay, oh, got gurgles going on in my tummy. And he's telling me I finally let go enough. The, the gurgles start and then everything in the system is happy. All right, so I hope that you learned a little bit more about yourself today and I hope that you remember to play. And I wish you well today. Enjoy today's Thursday. So fabulous Friday is on its way. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Take care.